Hey, welcome to Friday Fruit Clips. This is episode number 12, my weekly series where we push back against false teachers and false prophets. Generally use some humor on Friday because if you don't laugh sometimes, you might just go crazy. So I've got some ridiculous clips, boy, do I got some ridiculous clips picked up for you today. So with that, let's get started. Here we go. All right, so first up under the Big Tent Circus, we've got Donna Rigney. You can see this is her YouTube channel. She's got over a million views. Uh, let's read a little bit here. Pastor Donna Rigney, Minnesota. Right off the bat, we've got a red flag. Pastor, no. That is uh, in opposition to our Holy Scripture. Down here it says she is a frequent guest on Sid Roth's show and Elijah's streams. So those are two men who make their livings propping up false teachers and false prophets. So a couple of red flags for you there. Now we're going to look at this video first. You can see the title, Donna Rigney, Rewarded for Praying for Trump. Good grief. This video has gotten about 5,000 views. Put up two years ago. Another red flag, look, the comments are turned off. That's always very telling. So today, Donna, she's going to talk about uh, one, one of her trips to heaven, because she goes to heaven often. And uh, so we're going to listen to what she has to say, and we'll comment as we go. Yeah, they were up, you, the angels were on the roof. And yes, just... yes. This was, uh, I had a couple of encounters uh, that I went to heaven and saw my mansion in heaven. And on one specific occasion, I was walking along the beach because uh, the, the mansion's on the beach. Cool. It's on the ocean wow. in heaven. So uh, as I'm walking along with Jesus, I look ahead of me, and there's this mansion. And as I looked at it, I thought, oh my goodness, that's my mansion. Because I had seen it before on a previous visit, but from the front. And uh, so I saw angels on the roof of the mansion, and they were hammering away, working. And uh, one of the angels yelled out, we need more materials. Send us more materials. All right, so in getting you up to speed, Donna is telling the tale of when she was on one of her many visits to heaven. She's next to the ocean walking up the beach with Jesus because, you know, it's, it's the thing to do. Now, I'm not sure if this is one of those, you know, Jesus is my boyfriend and we take long walks on the beach type thing, but it kind of seems like it. And it just so happens, as luck would have it, that as she looks to the left, she, she can see her mansion from the backside, apparently. And, and look at that. Would you look at that? There's, there's carpenter angels up there, and they're working on the roof, right? Because that's a thing. That's apparently what they do. R remember Emma Stark? She talked about Eider angels. Well, these are carpenter angels, and they're hammering away. Looks like they're running out of materials. So that's where we are so far. The angels yelling out, we need more material. Wow. And that was the end of my visitation. And so I, I got along with the Lord and I, I realized that uh, God was prompting me to start a prayer meeting, my husband and I to start a prayer meeting at our home on Sunday nights to pray for the president, to pray for the nation. This was two years ago. And so we did it. We, we got it established and every Sunday in the morning we would go to our Sunday morning service and then in the evening we would have people come to our home and we would spend a number of hours uh, worshiping and praying and interceding. So this went on, months went by, and I'm back on another visit to heaven. And this time, again, I'm walking down the beach, uh, and I see my the beautiful mansion, and one of the angels came over and said uh, to the Father, the Father was there, said to the Father, we have so much material. Would it be all right if we send some of the material down to the earth because we have more than what we need here wow. to finish the roof? And I knew when I was hearing this that it was really the Father's heart to want to send uh, the blessings to the earth, but he was letting the angel think it was his idea. And so uh, after that, uh, more and more blessings started coming into our lives. And all right, did you get that? You paying attention? Let me lay this out for you here. Donna is on her second trip to heaven, and she's walking down that same beach. It's a very popular beach. She likes to walk when she uh, goes to heaven. She likes to walk that beach. 
And she's coming up behind her mansion again. And uh, lo and behold, here comes that same angel. And you've really got to appreciate the timing of this because Donna was there right at the right time when that angel came up to, yes, God the Father. God the Father was there. And why not? It was more than likely a beautiful sunny day. Surf was up, people out enjoying it. And the angel says, wow, now we have too much material. Can we send some of this to Earth? So what Donna is selling you here is that after her first trip to heaven, or at least the previous trip to heaven, she uh, went back to Earth and established a prayer group. And that apparently earned her enough to get those much needed materials to finish her mansion. And uh, so that's what she's selling you. Now, if you don't believe me, listen to how this ends. What you did. And I'm like, wow. And you know, there's another thing when, when she was talking about um, send more material. Do you know how you send material to build your mansion in heaven? By your giving to ministries. And, you know, of course, we want you to give me uh, your giving here or give it to the Rigneys. It's all this all good ground. But I don't care. Give it wherever you give it. But get going on this and start you, your, your home. Send the material so the angels can begin to build your mansion in heaven. If you don't send anything, there's no mansion. If you don't send anything, there's no mansion. If you don't send anything, there's no mansion. All right, I hope you caught that. Uh, if not, you can listen back. Uh, the audio is not that great. It's on their end. They did not have a microphone near them. But this guy right here, as he took over, he literally stated that if you don't send him or the Rigneys your money, you're not going to have a home in heaven. Now, he did say, or you could send it somewhere else. But the implication is you're here watching their video send the money in, otherwise you will not have a home in heaven. And again, this is just so dastardly. It is just so terrible. I, I pity the listeners who fall for this. And it is absolutely wrong. And so we stand in opposition to this. May God have mercy upon them for, uh, for teaching anyone who would listen uh, this horrifying lie. All right, we're going to listen to a couple more clips from one more video from Donna Rigney because she's just that ridiculous. And uh, get ready because there's a couple of doozies coming here. So we'll comment as we go. Expectancy. And so that was the position I was in when he came to me and uh, said, do you have faith? And I said, yes. And immediately I was back in that garden. Cool. Now there's a garden swing there and the father and Jesus around the garden swing, and I'm sitting in between the two of them, and it's just wonderful. And the well, last year when he brought me there, and I saw this beautiful garden, and I was on the swing. There was a big gorilla behind the swing, pushing the swing. I thought an angel was pushing it. <laughs> the swing's going back and forth on its own, and so I looked to see, and this big happy gorilla is there, smiling, so proud that it can push the Father and Jesus. Okay, now here, Donna. She's in heaven again, and she's describing being on a swing. And she's got Jesus on one side and the Father on the other side, while a smiling, happy gorilla is behind them, pushing them back and forth. Golly. But friends, now I've heard some things. This is like a bad 60s acid trip. Or like something you'd see from a Disney Fantasia-like movie. It's just, a, you know, before you get mad at me, let me assure you, Donna did not and she does not go to heaven. This is what I would coin as fantasy blasphemy. And that's exactly what it is. It's fantasy and it's blasphemy. Now consider the absolute lack of reverence for God here. There is no fear. There is no holiness. There is no awe. There's no amazement. She's just hanging out on a swing in the garden with a gorilla doing, you know, what gorillas love to do, you know, push swings with, with God on the swing. That's what gorillas do, apparently. Now, these social media prophets and these storytellers have no reservations with blaspheming God at every chance they get. 
they portray Jesus or God as, you know, just a couple of dudes chilling on the beach or maybe over in the garden sitting on the swing. It's sickening and it's done with more and more frequency in this time. It's atrocious. The alligator comes over, the alligator, Jesus opens the alligator's mouth, looks, puts his head in. He was like a kid. Jesus was like a kid. Honestly, what, what do you say to this? It's so shocking to watch these hucksters degrade our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and turn him basically into a carnival worker. Or, you know, somebody who works at the circus. Step right up, folks, and watch the Savior of the world stick his head in a live alligator's mouth. It's just, oh, it's, I can't even. And the, and the way she described, you know, Jesus, he's just like a kid. He's so fun. Watch, oh, he's so silly. He's putting his head in an alligator's mouth. I, I can't. It's, it's too much. It's so blasphemous. It's so degrading. The, these people... Are, I, I can't even imagine this all on Judgment Day. There, but I, I mean, certainly pray for Donna Rigney. But this is just—I don't have any more adjectives. I when I get so frustrated in seeing this stuff, I run out of adjectives because I'm so shocked and, and I'm so hurt by this. It's just oh man. Well, Jesus just loves us. He's not condemning us, and you know He takes us to heaven. I mean, as, and as you were saying, he'll, t he'll take anyone who has the faith. Right. You, you know, yeah, it's good to live holy and clean. It's all good. But he's not looking for that. He's just looking for a willingness. Wow. What do you say to that? This man right here, whether intentional or not, he's biblically illiterate. And he's dangerous. It's good to live holy and clean, but Jesus is not looking for that. Really? We're in Levit Leviticus chapter 11. Let's roll through these pretty fast. Look at verse 44. For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. In 1 Peter chapter 1, look at verse 16. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. How about that little thing called the Ten Commandments? Quite frankly, the entire Bible is our instructions on how we ought to live, written by God. What this man is saying, again, is just hideous. All right, so I, I think we're pretty maxed out. That's enough of uh, Donna Rigney. We're going to move on. Certainly pray for her. Pray that she will stop lying in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray that she'll stop shipwrecking faith of, boy, thousands if not hundreds of thousands pray that she'll come to the truth of jesus christ because the word of god jesus christ is enough without her making up all these fantasy blasphemous stories so let's move on all right next we're going to be looking at a couple of clips from stephen rockstar furtick with his skinny jeans and uh, he is a horrifying teacher and I can't really say it any nicer than that. Uh, but just a couple of clips. You're, you're looking at him rock out. This is uh, a video from, I guess this would be his Easter service of 2020 when everything was locked down because of the jib jab. There's uh, Brandon Lake, I believe. And so he's, he's, he's a terrible teacher. So we're gonna listen to a couple of comical uh, clips. Please remember that they call this guy pastor. Here we go. Hours ago, you didn't sleep much last night because it was hard to get the images out of your mind of how they beat the one that you believed in, how they broke his bones, how they lashed his back, how they broke his bones, how they broke his bones. How they broke his bones, really. This guy's a pastor. And he's out there teaching thousands through the internet and at his church, hundreds of thousands. Apparently that Jesus had his bones, plural, bones broken. Is that factual? Let's take a look. Now we're in the book of John, chapter 19. We're going to scroll down to, let's start in verse 33. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they break not his legs. 
But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bare record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that you might believe. Look at verse 36. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled, a bone of him shall not be broken. And nobody calls him on it. Nobody says anything. But hey, he looks cool in his leather jacket. That's the important thing. He says a lot of really neat things. So let's watch the next clip. Robin, if you'll come and play just a moment for me. I, I had some prophetic words that the Lord had impressed me today to give. And I don't, I don't do this a lot anymore. Uh, but I do if I'm impressed to. And the Lord said, today. Yeah, just uh, whatever you'd like to. Hallelujah. I heard this. I heard this this morning. I heard the name Amanda Lewis or Loomis. I'm not sure which one it was. but And then I heard the word cripple. I don't know if you're crippled in your body or crippled in your mind or you're just broken. But today the Lord wants to deliver you. He's come to you to let you know you're on his mind, Amanda. And I, I don't know if it's Lewis or Loomis. Maybe I'm saying it wrong. But he wants you to know that whatever crippled you, whether your body or your mind or in your life, if it was just a crippled life that should have been so much more than you see right now, the Lord has come to you today to restore to you the years the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm has eaten. I heard that name. I don't know anybody by that name. I heard it in my spirit. And so take courage. And don't entertain suicide or anything like that. You're going to miss the greatest part of your life you've ever seen in just a little while. I heard the name Ron. Ron? I wrote it R-O-N, Ron. He said, you seem to be losing, but he is going to win and start winning. So take courage with that. The Lord is bringing a good word to you to take hold of, of light and courage. Hallelujah. I heard this. I heard the name Milford, Milford. I'm not sure how you spell it, but I spelled at it, Milford. Then I heard the name James. Now, I don't know if it's a Milford James or if it's two people here, but I heard something about a leg, and it may be Milford or James. But then I heard this, a last name, leg. Leg, maybe lag. I don't know, but I heard that today. I've never heard a last name like leg. I wrote it with two Gs, but it's, it's yours. All right, Robin Bullock, here he is again. This is becoming all too normal for him. Robin Bullock, one of the most popular false prophets on social media, hands down, this is not even a contest. This guy's right up at the top, making a ton of money doing psychic readings. If you ever want to know why the church is so messed up, it's because the leaders are bringing the occult into the church. And so now he's giving psychic readings. People over the airwaves, oh, I hope he calls my name. Oh, please let him call my name. They love it. But it is not prophecy. He wants to pass this off as prophecy, and it's not. It's psychic gobbledygook. And so he stands up there, and he says, well, I'm getting, I got a word this morning. And I heard the name Lewis or Loomis. I just ain't sure. I don't know. How many times did he say, I don't know? I don't, that's not prophecy. Prophecy from God is concise. It's clear. And God gives a word and gives it to the prophet. And the prophet, it's his or responsibility to take it to the recipient and to clearly convey that which God has spoken. So this is not prophecy. And we want to call him out because this guy's atrocious. He's a fraud. And he's sitting, let me see if I can move this over here. Never too far from his wizard eagle staff over here. And again, people love it. Leather jacket, wizard staff, long hair, shredding the guitar. This is what he does. But we want to stand in opposition. So certainly continue to pray for Robin Bullock. But uh, when you see this type of stuff, understand this is not prophecy. This is the occult. This is as unholy as you can get. And he's bringing it into the church. 
he's preparing his followers to receive the Antichrist. And how does he do that? Well, he shreds their biblical faith and he brings in his own new apostolic reformation type doctrine, which is absolutely unbiblical. And therefore, he transforms the minds into mush. And so when the Antichrist shows up, they're going to be good and ready to be deceived because of frauds like Tombstone here. Uh, but certainly continue to pray for him. And uh, we're going to move on. So I don't know, my computer's acting kind of funny. Something, something weird's happening. Well, let's try to move on. I'm not sure what's going on here. Okay, well, I'm not sure what this is. We're having some. Well, oh, no, 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 no. Elizabeth Clare, how dare you get out of here? Hey, security, get over here. Elizabeth Clare has hacked us again. Security, security. Well, my apologies, folks. That's Elizabeth Clare, famous cult leader from the 70s and 80s. Always, always trying to hack us with that violet flame. She's quite a rascal. You keep out of here, Elizabeth Clare. All right, rounding off our program today on the right is Kim Robinson, notorious for her storytelling, her fake trips to heaven, as she continues her ministry of blasphemy and degrading Jesus. On the left is Steve Schultz, famous for providing a platform for blasphemy. He will not be held unaccountable. So Kim is going to tell you of a new blasphemous story with an adventure she had with Jesus. So here we go. And so I was instantly sitting on a motorcycle and I used to ride a motorcycle. And oh, you I, did? I, was, I did. <laughs> and so I was, I was looking at him like, I wonder what kind this is. Is this a Harley? Is this a Honda? You know, but it didn't have a name, but mine was red, which I like red. So I was happy about that. And I looked over at Jesus and he had it like a blue one. And I, there wasn't a name, so I, I couldn't tell what it was, but it was really cool looking. And Jesus is like, you want to ride? And I'm like, oh, yeah. All right, so getting you up to speed at this time, Kim Robinson, she's in heaven. Just another trip, you know, because it's frequent. It's just, just a regular thing for me because I'm so awesome. So we're, we're up there. I'm with Jesus, and we're chilling. We're hanging. And then, well, look, there's some motorcycles. Kim gets a red one. And Jesus gets the blue one, and it looks very cool. And then Jesus looks at Kim, because out of everyone in the world, Jesus is going to take her on a motorcycle ride. He looks at her and says, you want to go for a ride? And then her weird, perverse kind of reaction is like, oh, yeah. And it's just that weird, because that's who she is. But it's just one of those things. So now Jesus, being just the regular dude that he is, we're going to go on a motorcycle ride. And that's where we are. And again, did this happen? Of course not. But to gullible listeners, yes, this happened. They're sitting on the other end of their computer going, really? Did this? Sure, Kim wouldn't lie. This Surely this must have happened. And they think it's real. And, and what happens? Well, they send her money because this is entertainment. But the better description is this is fantasy blasphemy. This is what this is. So here's where we are so far in the story. Let's continue to listen. Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> Ride a motorcycle in heaven. What could be, you know, yeah. what could be better? And so we took off. And in heaven, you don't have to worry about how fast you go, you know, because you can go fast. And we were leaning way over on the Gee. side. And we're just, as, as, you know, curves. And it was actually... It wasn't on the road, but it felt like you were on the road. I knew, I know that we were up off the road, even though the road was below. All right. So they're not on the road. So we're talking about some sort of heavenly hover motorcycles. That makes sense. You can take the curves better that way. And I was looking at it and I thought, how is this running? You know, does it, it doesn't have gas. Is it, you know, what is making this go? And it, it just felt like it was sucking in the air. And it was using the air of heaven as as power. It's the only thing I, I don't know if it was. So you That's, felt like it was, did it have an engine sort of a sound or was it quiet? 
It had an engine sound. Okay. Yeah, it sounded so like a big it, Harley. Yeah. Okay. Because, uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, that's interesting that you say that because I was about to say if God himself, of course, this is Jesus, who is also God, if they were going to do something that would fun, that would be fun, the Harley guys would want that sound. They would want that, whatever we call it. They used to call them choppers, yeah, whatever yeah. they. You know, it's really quite stunning. Here is Steve Schultz, right? Look at him getting all giddy. Wait a second, Kim. Did the motorcycles sound like Harleys? Because that's what we like here on Earth. Did God cater to us? Are we going to have Harley-like motorcycles in heaven? And Kim's like, oh, yeah. Sounded just like a thunderous Harley. And that's really important. So Steve's getting all excited. So in essence, what's heaven like? Well, it's just like Earth. We ride motorcycles here on Earth, and we're going to ride motorcycles up in heaven, and both motorcycles sound like Harleys. And that's important. God needs to, you know, bend to our will to cater to us. You know that biblical verse that says, I hath not seen nor ear heard, nor hath it entered into the heart of a man, the things that God has prepared for those that love him. And I'm paraphrasing. You know that verse? Well, that's this. That's what this means. That's the best Kim could come up with. What are we going to do in heaven? Well, the exact same thing that we do on earth. Isn't that fun? Only she gets to do it early with Jesus, and the motorcycles sound like Harleys. This is utterly insulting and ridiculous. Yeah. And they're loud. So it, it was loud. It was like it, um, it. And it rumbled underneath you. And it had, it had wow. you know, the, the handles, you know, so you weren't just with your arms out flying. You were actually steering the motorcycle. And you could lean over and you'd shift gears. And it was, I mean, it was a motorcycle. And we were going around these corners, and then I saw Jesus. You want me to tell? <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell, tell. I, that was that's my favorite part. What you're about to tell me. So I got to. You can't not. You got to hear this, folks. Okay. <laughs> and so as Jesus and I were leaning around these corners and going fast, because I like fast. I don't like mopeds. You know, I want to go fast. <laughs> I, you know, and so we were going fast around these corners, and Jesus misses the corner and hits a tree. And his motorcycle just kind of explodes. All right. This is, of course, very, very telling. Uh, here is Kim telling her story. We're riding. First thing I need to let you know is we like going fast. Got to go fast. We, do. We, we ain't some of these slow pokers. I like to go fast. I like it fast and furious. And so Kim's telling you a little bit about herself. And so... She says they're going fast. Now, out of the two of them, who is the one who wrecks? That's right. It's not Kim who's new to these heavenly hover motorcycles. She doesn't wreck. Even though she tells you clearly she's going fast, the one that wrecks is Jesus. And again, this is very telling. These cultic, new age New Apostolic Reformation freaks love to degrade Jesus. Somehow, Jesus, who is the creator of all things, our holy God, our Savior, who died and suffered for our sins, who is filled with all skill and wisdom above all that is named, he's the one that wrecks. And it's very telling. And it's, you know, it makes for a cute story. But it also degrades Jesus as somehow she had more skill on her motorcycle than even the Lord of Lords. Many of you don't think this is a big deal, but it's a consistent aspect of this storytelling. Jesus is always degraded and it's atrocious. And I come up, I see it and I come up and my, cause you have your soul, you have yeah. your mind when you're in heaven. And so my first thought was, oh no, I killed Jesus. I am <laughs> going to be in trouble, you know, because that's what you think. And so as I came up on the, the tree and the motorcycle, Jesus is laying there and he sits up and he is laughing and he throws <laughs> his head back and he is just laughing. So again, tragically, tragically unbiblical just fantasy. I thought I killed Jesus. What an idiotic thing to say, as though that could happen. No, what, nobody who knows God would ever even think to have that thought. It is impossible. But yet here she is, and people just giggle and chuckle. Oh, well, 
and Steve on the left here. Oh, did this really happen? Oh, I believe it. And that's what Steve does, though. He's got to do that. He provides the platform for all these absolute heretics while they sit up there and destroy the faith of millions. Just tragic. And I'm like, oh, whew, oh yeah, you can't die in heaven. You know, you can't even you can't, get hurt. You can't even get hurt. There wasn't broken. There was wow. not a cut. There wasn't a bruise. and nothing. He was just laughing because that was really fun. And so he stands up and his motorcycle goes, and it comes all back together again. And I'm like, whoa. And he gets back on. He looks at me and says, you ready? I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so we take <laughs> off again. So, hey, Kim, should we get back on the bikes and keep riding? Oh, yeah. Bill, who talks like that to Jesus? Well, Kim does. Kim has a perverted history of storytelling particularly when it comes to Jesus. You can check out some of the previous videos I've done on her. She does. She, she, I absolutely believe out of all the women out there that have this type of Jesus is my boyfriend type thing, Kim does. And it's fantasy and it's sick. So, and I also wanted to make sure that I included that computer animated motorcycle wreck because that's what Kim wants you to believe happened. Again, Kim had the skill to take the corner at high speeds, but not Jesus. So watching that little computer animated clip puts it into perspective. This is what she's selling the people out there. And the people are like, wow, that's so funny. Jesus didn't have the skill to stand on his motorcycle and he wrecked. It's just ridiculous. Anyway. We'll wrap things up there with these four. So thank you for joining me on this week's episode of Friday Fruit Clips. I'm showing you a bowl of rotten fruit because that's what we want to avoid. Don't follow these teachers who are unbiblical, undoctrinal. They teach heresy and blasphemy. And watch out for them. Serve Jesus Christ in truth and sincerity. Read your Bible. So with that, we're going to wrap it up, and we'll see you next time. God bless.